Good morning and happy March. It is time for Second Sunday. And I am actually broadcasting from the past. Because right now, when you're watching this at 11, 11 a.m., I will be scurrying around town uh, looking for some really cool old stained glass for my new apothecary that I'm creating here in Kansas City. You know, when you get the when you get the call that you find some little treasure, you go. So I thought I would broadcast from the past. And while you're watching it in the future, I will be finding some treasure because I am feeling very lucky this month. And I don't know about you guys, but uh, this second Sunday is going to be quite intense. And it depends on which side of the spectrum that you really are on. Every month I do an energy broadcast. If you're just seeing me for the first time, my name is Jessica Alstrom. Yes, I'm crazy. All the good ones are, right? And I have had for the last about 10 years, I have had a either a wellness center or an online academy. And I have focused on helping people access higher levels of their own potential, healing parts of them that they didn't even know were there and opening up that real um, alive consciousness that is waiting for us to pursue it. So we have complete unconsciousness and we have super consciousness all in a tiny little living space, right? And this is why sometimes you feel so crazy because you're so woke in certain areas and some areas really are still uh, feeling like uncertain. Anywhere there's fear, there's a, you're asleep. Anywhere that you are certain, you're awake, right? And a certainty does not come from knowing and having everything figured out. Certainty comes from knowing yourself and knowing what you're capable of. And this is really going to be the focus of this year. All right. So in 2014, um, one of my best girlfriends and I opened up Transcendence Wellness Center. And it was it was a whim. It was like we, we can't not not, you know, either one of us could work for other people. Well, uh, we had authority issues and we want to save the world. Right. We want to wake everybody up. And I had gone through a major Kundalini awakening. And so I had literally like thing power coming out of my fingertips. And I'm like, I just want to touch people. I just want to help people. And I had really no idea what I was doing, but uh, my heart was in the right place. And we were quite successful here in the Bible Belt of, of uh, Kansas City. And uh, we uh, ended up opening three different centers in Kansas City before I pretty much with, you know, typical empaths with no boundaries got myself really burned out. And I decided if I can do this, anybody can do this. And uh, you know, I opened up a school. I opened up a virtual school. And from doing that, we were able to facilitate this uh, quantum method all over the world. And therefore we were able to travel all over the world and see all of you guys. And we have been doing that pretty strongly uh, for the past, I don't know, gosh, it feels like seven, six or seven years. And um, here I am still doing Second Sunday, which is kind of the topic that I want to talk about today, right around this Easter energy really coming in. In, um, in, in 2014, I had the displeasure of going through kind of a breakup at the time with my, um, my son's father. And I was, you know, feeling like I was going crazy. I had all of this energy inside of me and I didn't really know what to do with it other than help people. And I didn't know why I was seeing what I was seeing and hearing what I was hearing and able to do what I was able to do at the time. And anyways, you know, when you're that excited, you draw attention. And I ended up getting on a lot of different radio shows at the time. And unfortunately, during this breakup um, and new path that I was on, my um, ex mother in law heard me on a radio show talking about aliens, and that didn't go over too well. <laughs> so I get a call basically from a lawyer saying that there's going to be a custody issue because mom is crazy and they wanted to take my two year old son away. And I'm sure some of you have felt like you have been at that crossroads where you're ready to stand in your truth, you're ready to stand in your power, you're ready to tell the truth of what you know, you're ready to help. And, and the ones that are around you, like the Last Supper, are literally the ones who don't have your back, right? I'm sure every one of you have experienced that on some level or another. And this was definitely one of my pivotal moments in my career, because in that moment, I was really, 
being drawn to do this live channeling, this live broadcasting, this, this downloaded information that I would get every day and give myself a platform to just spew it and hope someone would hear it. And, and in that moment, there was a crossroads, you know, stop with your witchy ways and be a good mom, right? Whatever that is, or, you know, go off the deep end and maybe lose your child. And so I stood there and I thought back over all my life, like always silence myself. I've always done what's right for everyone else. I've always played the back seat and been the rescuer when people needed it. I've been on the front line of the, you know, the cross myself for other people. I have given until I have bled to death. And this time felt different. You know, like, of course, I love my child with all my heart. But at the same time, I thought, if this is how it works, and I have this gift inside of me, how could I, how could I be punished for sharing it? So it was this crossroads. And I know every single one of you have been on it on some platform or another, where you have to make a choice. Do you choose the heartstrings, the fear, the obligation, the conditioning, the well-being, the comfort, the, the known? Or do you just jump off the cliff and hope because you feel in your heart that you have these wings that they're going to somehow parachute you? And it was right there in that moment where I said, well, if I, if I continue to sneak around with this, then there's got to be something that, that I don't feel good about myself. What, you know, maybe I'm judging myself and maybe that's why I'm attracting this. And so I looked at energy from a spectrum point and I noticed that flickering light, well, that attracts a lot of bugs. And that's what I was. I was uh, being a flickering light. I was this and then I was this, right? I'm, I'm this crazy channeling person who can see in all these different dimensions and seeing people's bodies. And I'm also, you know, trying to still fit in after, you know, 35 years of, of not fitting in, trying to fit into the status quo of a good Christian family and be the mom that everyone wants me to be. And, and there I was, it was that moment. And I realized that as long as I flicker, I'm going to get attacked. But what happens if I just turn that volume all the way up, at least where I could at the time? I thought, the sun, it'll just blind you. You're going to get out of the way if you don't like it. You're not going to be drawn to it. You're not going to try to suck away from it. And so I said, this is my opportunity to go completely public. And in that moment, I started doing Second Sunday. It's emotional. And I said, I'm coming out of the closet. And if I have to lose my child for this, then this is all broken. And then I really need to do this. And of course, the universe loves courage because like a bad dream, the more that I stepped out and the more that I told the truth and the more that I shared what I knew, the more all of that little hype disappeared into the shadows. Now, mind you, what, nine years later, they're still heckling. They're still judging, but that's okay because that does not affect who I am. And in that moment, I was not choosing saving the world. I was choosing myself and I was letting the universe know that, that I am creating Sorry, I didn't expect to get emotional. So here we are at the this moment where, you know, 2,200 years ago, the idea of the Christ on the cross for the sins of man, and they know not what they do. And and here we are, you know, we're we're some of us are are experiencing war. Some of us are watching the third dimension literally implode some of us are building new ground in the fifth dimension that feels like absolute bliss and joy and some of us probably the most of us are at that crossroads right do i go off the deep end here and answer this call that's just not going away or or do i do the right thing 
for this world that doesn't feel like it even knows what the right thing is. And if we really look back at the topic, I figured this particular topic was going to help me lose some followers who are not ready to move with me and also maybe bring some new ones. So guys, if you're watching this on YouTube and, and you, you think I'm nuts, go ahead and, and subscribe because it's going to get weirder. And if I've already said something that just please unsubscribe because I do not want to be annoying you like nails on a, a chalkboard, right? And I don't want to be your flickering light if I am ruffling your feathers here. You choose. And I'm going to choose me, which means I'm going to keep showing up and I'm going to keep telling my stories and I'm going to keep telling my metaphors because they're the new probable, the true parables. And, and they help people really understand where they are because we feel so alone at times, but we're all in this together. And from whatever perspective you're on, if you're, you're really going for it and you're really going to make your family proud after all these years, then, then I commend you because that's brave. And if you're at that crossroads right now where you're one foot in and one foot out, and you're constantly getting ghosted and you're constantly like getting triggered and you're getting pushed and pulled. I understand been there for a very long time. And if you're over on the, at the new platform of the new energy, I'll be right there. We're on our way and we're setting up camp to basically let out a, a ripple vibration to let everyone know that heaven is created inside of hell and your problem right now that you're looking at you're facing you're you're pondering you're worrying about you're fearful about the actual solution is inside of the problem and what you're going to understand about the fifth dimension and moving into higher consciousness is that the only way you can get there is through a submarine it is not out here it is in here and so your job ever since the pandemic was to get yourself in here at whatever cost. Remember put yourself back together, who you are and be responsible, the ability to respond to the call that is coming inside from you. It will always be there. It will, it will turn into a ringing in your ear if you push it away enough. It'll turn into itchy skin. It'll turn into conflict outside of you. It will turn into money issues and time issues and aging issues and friendship issues and personal issues and illnesses if you ignore it. Because every ounce of that is literally nothing more than separation of you. And when we come through in our first incarnation, we are naturally separate because of our vibrational signatures, not separate from our soul song but separate in the vibration that we are here to basically put back together, kind of like a mosaic. I always say that spirit is moving so fast you can't see it, right? So if you are one song, right, coming out of you, your heart has a song, right? Your soul has a song. And that song will not change no matter how much you split apart, no matter how many times you die, no matter how many times you live, you will always have the same song. And in that song, there is a part of it that is playing so fast, so loud that you can't hear it. But as you get closer to it, it sounds really like one sound moving so fast. If you've ever played when we were younger, we had the the um, stereo equipment with the amplifiers and the tuners and we could speed songs up and we could slow them down. Well, imagine that you are one song and at the same time, you are sped up, you're way ahead of yourself. And then there is part of you that's playing so low that it actually sounds scary. Remember how we used to be like, oh my gosh, that sounds like the devil when we'd slow the song way, way, way down. Well, you have your super consciousness and you have your unconsciousness and it's all still you. And you are separate so that you may create a hybrid of yourself, which means that when the soul broke apart from source energy or God itself and said, I'm going to play, I want to go see what I am, I want to see what I can do, I want to have experiences, but I will always be this song, bits and pieces of you broke away as things happened, and like the soul of a shoe, 
the soul remained the fundamental part of you, and it will always remain that purity, that that you, that will never change. And it's moving so fast, and it's having so many experiences of that once that you would never even be able to let, like through a linear logical expression, even understand what your soul is doing. But those pieces that broke apart, right? have been lost in separation, lost in darkness, lost in despair, can't quite hear the call of source anymore, doesn't even realize it is a song, doesn't realize that it is a soul. So it looks more like a spirit. And we know that spirits can be quite haunting. These bits and pieces of us left behind in trauma, these bits and pieces of us that have disassociated from because they were unworthy. So we left them behind to go search for our worth. And as we move into a circular spiral pattern back through evolution to collect the bits and pieces of ourselves so that we may be whole again, we are not moving into the ascension of moving toward God through a piece of us. We are here to pick ourselves back up and take us home. So you're actually here on a reconnaissance mission tuned into your soul's song that is the same as your spirits that are haunting the past that are infiltrating the present moment that are poisoning the future with their memories of pain and as you attend to move forward you notice that you end up right at the scene of the trauma or the crime again and again and again it feels like 10 steps forward it is not. It is you getting into higher levels of awareness, knowing thyself. The more you know yourself, the more you can find the lost pieces of yourself. The higher your vibration gets, the more energy you have to dive down deep into what you may appear a failure. But if we look at the root word of failure, it means to fall. And so we are all falling right now and we are picking up our pieces and we were going this again. How am I here? Except this time we're going to show up differently. This time we are going to say, I remember you. I had to leave you when I was eight years old because we were ugly. So I went and searched for my beauty. I remember you. You got humiliated because you weren't very smart. So you went and got a doctorate, right? I remember you. You were, you know, not mom's favorite so or dad's favorite. And so you've been searching for your person and your partner your whole life. So as this piece resides in the exact moment of its own trauma, whether it's this lifetime or another, it says and tells the same story over over again why the bits and pieces of you were that were light enough moved in a forward motion to go figure out how to find out what worthy was what beauty was what success was what love was and you've been on this pursuit trying to outrun yourself this entire time when actually what you were doing is vibrating the same exact frequency one was higher one was lower the same song and in that moment you are back and saying oh, i remember you I'm here. Tell me what it's been like for you to be here for 40 years telling this story until I came back. All right. So as we get deeper into what we're doing in our academy here is we are going from alchemy to the alchemist. And when we really break that word apart, it just means all of me. You know, people think that magic is being created and miracles are everywhere, but not for me. The person over there can do it. That celebrity has it. They were lucky, right? Like a leprechaun. Like they're just lucky. And basically what it looks like when you see someone achieving major global success is that they, at least in that area, have those pieces of themselves working in unity as a team. Because the bits and pieces of yourself that you had to abandon and reject as a child, you know, in, in you know, your, your teenage years, and then maybe even later on when you had kids and you had to stop being you or work a job that didn't let you be you, you're now on a treasure hunt back to yourself. 
So if you're feeling like you're moving backwards right now, or you're more confused than ever, or you've done so much work and you don't have the money yet or the time yet or the health yet, then what you're actually seeking is not the money, the success, right? The time, what you're seeking is the part of you, you lost in time, the part of you that probably had the potential to make a lot of money, but it was not right. Or the volume was too loud for your family or your ideas were too big and you had to shut everything down. Right. And so you have to understand that the physical human body is designed to evolve as consciousness returns. Consciousness returns, which means not that you ever were truly unconscious. The, the parts of you that are acting in an unconscious behavior are not not you. They're just separated and if very far away. So they don't remember you because they're ghosting an immediate time in trauma. That's why when you get triggered, sometimes you act like an eight-year-old. Sometimes when someone gets triggered at you, they act like a four-year-old. And it is because the trigger is actually a possession. It is a possession that is happening from the past, the PTSD, inward stimulation, moving back into you and channeling right through you. And in that moment, you are that pain and you are either defending it or you are hiding it or avoiding it or looking at it. And, it. and in this moment, the best thing you could do is look at it through the observer's perspective of a parent looking at a child, maybe having or experiencing bad behavior, but actually just being in pain and actually being and acting out pain. That's what all bad behavior is. And so you can't sit here and tell any of us that you are all the way super conscious yet. Otherwise, you'd be somewhere else, right? We're here and we're here in this story where we are kind of on this reconnaissance mission to alchemize ourselves because without all of you, you will not be able to turn the rest of this brain on. Without all of you, you will not be able to activate the DNA no matter what practitioner activated your DNA. You will not get rid of the past by some practitioner cutting your strings because you are you. And as long as you are vibrating the same song, whether it's super fast or super slow, the only way that you will become a very powerful, magical, full of miracles being is to literally go into that humble space and go, I think it's time for me to go pick up my trauma. I think it's time for me to go get the kids that I orphaned, the, the heart that's broken, that's still broken 15 years later that I'm searching for in another person. I think it's time for me to go find me. And this is what this global pandemic in disguise has given us. It's given us the opportunity to stop pretending that we're busy so that we don't have to look at the past, that we're not trying to outrun the past and get to the future. We're busy because we're busy. See, time is an illusion because it was designed for you to decide, choose, discern, and become. That's what time was. But see, now we get all lost in time. And that's why I said I'm, I'm giving you this from the past because the past is, is like where your memories are, okay? The present is where your present focus is and your future is undetermined. So when you go to a psychic and you say, can you read my future? I would not give anyone that power right now, especially when you are just nothing but infinite potential, which means, yes, you may have a couple of life paths that are pretty brightly lit as far as where your focus normally goes. But a lot of you that don't know how to read your own psychic Akashic records are too busy trying to hold the past away and hope that something good is going to happen in the future when the past is going to repeat itself through law of resistance and law of attraction again and again and again until you surrender. What I'm doing not working, 25 years of metaphysics, I don't have any more money, you know, 30 years of spiritual training and my relationships are still broken, right? Because all we've done, right, with our spiritual training is create a spiritual ego, that now wants nothing to do with unconsciousness, yet full of fear 
So if we are fear, then we are separate and we are asleep. If we are love, if we are, if we are brave, if we are courageous, if we are standing on, you know, on the cross or at the fire line and saying, you know what, I am that I am and I'm here. And if it has to end this way, I'd rather die being me than continue to silence myself in 2022, where it is the rude awakening year. It is the damned if you do and you damned if you don't year. And we are at the threshold of the resurrection formulas of the ascension right here. And this understanding of the Christ consciousness is just the purity of your heart. It is, are you going to do for you what you've done for everyone else, right? The definition of third dimensional love is selflessness. It is caretaking. It is rescuing. It is being there. It is enabling. It is allowing while condemning and suffering and entrapping and hurting and abusing self. Now, the universe doesn't see how good of a mom you are to your kid. It sees how good of a mom you are to yourself because there isn't anything outside of you. Your kids are a fragment of your own collective consciousness. And the way that you parent others by abusing self is seen through the universe's eyes as abuse. So when I abuse myself and I take care of everyone else, well, let me ask you a question. Has that ever rewarded you long-term? I know we get value from feeling like we can help. I know we have prided ourselves on our gifts. I know that we are confused because we can do for others and sometimes we can't do for ourselves. I know that empaths choose narcissistic relationships. And the reason why is because we're here to learn from each other. The narcissist is only empath to itself, not anyone else. The empath is a narcissist to self because it doesn't care about itself. It cares about everyone else. And this is the dividing line right now where we are at with the resurrection point, which means that the caterpillar within you that loves the caterpillar family and loves being in that, that caterpillar world is craving the wings. It's craving flight. It's craving new. It's craving abundance of self experienced which means that the abundance that you are asking for is literally inside of you and who around you is not letting you share it. Do you believe your job, parents, obligations, kids are really, really, really telling you no? Or is it because you have abandoned yourself, you need all of those things to feel whole? As you begin to pick yourself back up this month and next month, you're going to notice that new abilities come in, new ideas, new opportunities. Because the thing is, is the parts of ourselves that we have disassociated from the most are actually the ones holding on to your greatest talents. You think, oh, well, I can, sp I can channel spirit. And, and like that me is dead from the past, maybe. And, but it's guaranteed haunting you in the worst possible moments. And it's going to be haunting you through time relationships, health, and money, because it is the mortal aspect of who you have abandoned and rejected. So therefore, if you have abandoned and rejected your own time, you will be abandoned and rejected by time. If you have abandoned and rejected yourself for a relationship, you will be abandoned and rejected by a relationship. If you have abandoned your self-care or your own needs for money, you will be hurt by money, all right? And if you continue to give to others or to ignore this, this will start to bully you, as you've probably noticed. There is no way out, there is only in. And this pandemic, this implosion, this war over there, this story over here will continue to unfold, which means that Everything that you are afraid to lose from a false security point is going to start getting really, really pressurized, which means that as the third dimension starts to implode, you're going to be like, 
I've been doing so much work. I thought I'd have more money by now. I thought I'd have more time. I thought I'd be healthier. But see, the thing is, is none of those things you were supposed to get to go over there. All of those things you were supposed to remember that you are. You see, money is just the masculine energy manifested from abundance. Together, married creates wealth. Okay? Your time. Your time is something that you literally create, manipulate, choose, bend to your highest exploration of your heart's desires. You make time for what you make time for. Everything else is an excuse. The relationships that you choose to embed and attach to symbolize the lost pieces of you and are quite addictive until you realize that you're being literally punished for loving. And everything will continue to go on just like this until you stop and say, this is a story. And I think I'm dreaming inside the dream again. And I need to remember that I'm dreaming and I need to take a step back and observe myself. And I need to check my hormones that are making me feel like these feelings are real, but they're just a soundtrack of my memories. And they are making me feel excited about jumping into another obligation because this feels hopeful, which if you take in quantum fitness, you know, hope is a drug. It is a drug that sets you up for expectation and expectation sets you up for disappointment, which will turn into depression. Depression then is where you lose your motivation. Depression is where you lose your ability to care. Depression is when you have no energy except to survive. And depression is condensed, impacted disappointment. So are you depressed or is your life disappointing? I think that if we could just accept the fact that it is, that the weirdos and the misfits and the artists and the renegades and the pioneers and the outlaws are never going to fit in. And we have literally almost destroyed ourselves trying to reshape our puzzle piece to fit in the status quo of collective consciousness, even though we've never really understood it, got along with it, or really wanted it. But see, in your child's heart desire, there is something about acceptance. It desires acceptance sometimes more than food, sometimes more than shelter. You will stay in a relationship longer, even if you're being abused, as long as you feel accepted and or as long as you can try to feel accepted. Try means trauma. Anytime you hear yourself say, well, I'm trying, I'm trauma. Okay, good. Let's take a look inside. So obviously, I've been doing this teaching for a really long time, and it's come so easy for me and so effortless for me to be able to share this higher level of consciousness that at times I have forgotten that there is lower pieces of me, that there is unconscious parts of me. Yet, it's really impossible for you to forget those things because those are the things that are attracted to parts of your life that aren't good for you. Those are the pieces of me that we're attracting the wrong relationships, attracting the wrong business partners, attracting the wrong, you know, solutions to problems. Those were the parts of me that were neglecting certain areas of me. And as I started to look at my point of attraction more from a scientific perspective, necessarily than a judgment and a shame and guilt perspective, then I started to understand that the higher me is, is the teacher, but the lower me is a student. And it was my job to humble myself and start chopping down the spiritual ego, right, that knew everything and get to the point where I know nothing. And it was in that moment that then I was a vibrational match to the lost pieces of me. Because haven't you guys wondered why you're manifesting such dark energy times right now or dark circumstances or feelings? Are they dark or are they just unconscious? And is it? Only can we pick someone up where we left them. So if you're returning to the scene of your crime, if you're returning to the scene of your trauma, if you're returning to the scene of your own abandonment, then you should rejoice because you are exactly where you're supposed to be to pick yourself back up. I know you were high and you fell low, but you didn't fail. You fell in order to get yourself. There is someone down there that is you who is needing to integrate in the 
piece of you that needs to come home. And you have an opportunity to show up differently this time. You're not going to run away and abandon yourself again for some guy or a job that's going to strip you. You're not going to leave the stories impacted in your heart that you want to share or the art inside of you anymore. This time together from the grief of recognizing your own lost, disassociated ghosts, you're going to make something out of it. You're going to turn that pain into purpose, potential, power. You're not going to know what your purpose is until you start finding these pieces of you. So if right now all you're doing is manifesting old traumas, then you are on purpose. You are living on purpose because this is our purpose right now. Our resurrection is to rise for the death experiences or the abandonment and rejection moments of our lives and integrate them back in with unconditional accepting love. I hear you. I see you. Wow. I can't believe I've left you here this whole time. I didn't even know you were here. I thought you were with me. Well, guess what? They're not very happy. (laughs) <laughs> so there is going to be some reconciliation, probably an intervention that is going to be required. Hopefully you have a mentor if you don't, have, if you are not good at recognizing yourself in dark situations, I recommend getting someone to help you with this because it's pretty obvious when you're not looking from your own perspective, right? So in this storyline here of March, 2022, it is all about integrating duality into non-duality. This is where our journey is this year, regardless of what you're studying or where you're at. Complete unconsciousness, super conscious, this is what you're doing, all right? We are all in this together. One thing that I've learned, especially these last two years of diving really deep into my own suffering, because I will tell you, I've channeled ego a lot more than I've channeled spirit in the last five years, because spirit doesn't know what bills are. Spirit don't know exactly how to pay a gas bill. Okay, it doesn't know that you're supposed to just, you know, do certain things here. There's no real understanding when there is spirit translating through you that's never been embodied. You know, you hear just find the right frequency, find the relief. You're like, what? (laughs) So I channeled ego these last five years and studied every protocol of the victim perpetrator sequence of the loss, the found, the projecting, the hypocrite right? The the so-called dark that is only necessarily pain in disguise, bad behavior is a call for love. I literally swam in ego these last five years. And not that I was acting as my ego, but I was learning because the thing is, is the unconscious parts of you are actually the parts of you that you don't know. You already know spirit. You are. You are the light. What you're supposed to do is bring that down and illuminate your own dark into it. See, empaths and light beings and starseeds, they think that we're here to save the world. This world doesn't need saving. It's on a course correction process to integrate into itself so that it can evolve into a divine embodied God's work, which means walking as Christ, activating the DNA cannot happen if all of you are not on the ship. Okay, so if your life is going up and down, up and down, right, sideways, notice what you're not noticing. Don't resist the pain anymore. Don't resist the memories. If you find, why am I on this street? I haven't been in the street for 10 years. Look at everything that's happening to you right now as an escape room. And if you've noticed, the more people you have in an escape room, the easier it is to get out of there. Well, you need to find about nine of you and, and see if the conclusion of the linear, the logic, the mystic, the psychic, the weirdo, the goth, right? The, all of these versions of you that are hiding, that have been pushed away because they weren't accepted, they weren't right, they weren't smart enough, they didn't appear good enough, were actually all of your super talent. Because over the last year, I have been working to integrate all these different aspects of myself. It's been 90% of my focus, so much more than teaching or traveling or sharing. You know, it's been. I've been on this reconnaissance mission of myself. And some of these aspects of myself, I can't see. I have to manifest through other people, places and things as my mirror. And so I'm very grateful for that. And some things that I don't realize until it's post-manifestational awareness. And that's fine too, because you can't get it wrong and time doesn't exist. 
And so the more energy you give to this search and this find, then the faster, then you will start to remember your true purpose. And your true purpose is to live your heart's desire. You know, how many of my clients have been like, I don't know what I want to do with my life because I like to do so many things. And if I have to pick one thing, I'm going to be super bored. Yes, I love singing, but do I want to sing all the time? You know, yes, I love art, but do I want to do it art all the time? You know, yes, I want to heal people, but do I want to do that all the time? I want to build houses. I want to do this. So I do nothing. I work at a job. I complain. The boss gets richer and buys new cars. The boss does many different things while I do one thing that I'm pretty good at while I daydream and worry how I'm going to make it. Or why don't you realize that you're not supposed to do one thing, that your integration factor, this is the, probably the most important thing that I've said all year, guys, hear this, hear this. Your integration factor is going to create an opportunity for you where it's all inclusive, which means everything you've ever been everything you've ever known, every job you've ever had, everything you've ever studied, anything you've ever been interested in is actually part of an opportunity that is waiting for you on the other side of integration. Because I've had many different jobs. I've been an elementary school teacher. I have been an interior designer. I've been in real estate. I've worked in the science field. I've worked in, as a fitness and health professional. I've worked as nutritionist. I've worked as a life coach. I've been a mom. I've been a wife, right? I've been also the seeker of all those things. Behind all those jobs that I just mentioned, those careers that I've had, I was also the seeker of those things. I got into fitness because I wanted to figure out how to get fit. I studied nutrition to learn how to feed myself, right? So there was two sides of my wisdom happening in the search and pursuit of my careers. And although when they fail and they disappear and you think I'm starting over like again at 35, homeless, no money, no opportunities. Now, three single mom with three kids, I'm a failure. Or am I just falling to get to the place where I abandoned myself originally? Because that was what my 2009 was. It was my great fall. And I had to get rid of the false securities of the money and the chasing success and the, the husband that didn't appreciate me and the kids and, and fall into my own pain so that I could resurrect. See, you're doing this constantly. Resurrection doesn't just happen this time of year. It's the cocooning, the butterfly effect, the caterpillar that then becomes the essence of the, cat the, the butterfly again and again and again and again until all of these pieces are back in. And once that happens, what you guys are going to notice is that you know exactly what you want to do, where you want to do it, how you want to do it, and with whom you want to do it with. And wild stallions could not keep you from it. Because I want to tell you, this year, I've created several businesses from all of my different aspects. Because I am an interior designer. I am a teacher. I am a student. I am a fitness practitioner. I am a wellness coach. I am a life coach, right? I am a channel right? I am all of these things. And why would I want to pick one thing and only do that? Because sitting here telling you about spirit every week is fun, but there's a lot of bits and pieces of me that want to do other things. Therefore, as I've been integrating, I have been able to do things I've never done before because that part of me was lost since I was five years old and was told to be quiet because that was the real leader in me. I had to silence my divine masculine within me, which is my provider, my protector, my builder. And as I have resurrected the own, my own masculine energy within me, I know how to do things now that I didn't know how to do before, that I was worried about being alone as a woman. I needed a man for it. Now I have one. And it is in this essence, I have over the last six months created several different companies for all of my aspects to celebrate. I have Moonshine in a Teacup, which is my interior design and my fashion line. I have my new skincare that is anti-aging, that is, we use very, very, very good quality venom that is coming from not pain or cruelty to our bees and our snakes, but it's the aftermath which means we are not hurting any bees. We're using venom in our anti-aging skincare. And you'll find out why if you tune into Quantum Fitness. 
I have created Quantum Fitness, which is an isolated, isolated metric, meditative, resistance training, quantum healing hypnosis version of fitness done in 15 minutes to basically rewire your whole body. I have created the Alchemist Apothecary, which is about 10 generations of medicine women inside me who know how to use medicinal medicines from the ancient past. And in this one year, I had created all of these companies that I love to play over here and over here and over here. And I finally understand my ADHD. It's that extra sensory multidimensional ability to multitask. And because these pieces are all within me, I'm right now, right in Kansas City, acting as a one man show opening these things, but I do have partners. I have my company that is our, our quantum method that is out of Ireland. And I want to celebrate my best friend and my business partner, Julie Flanagan. And she has literally been the anchor point that has helped me resurrect everything that I am and, and given me that support so that we could really kind of find the rest of me. And now she's finding the rest of her and we are getting to do that together. And I have so many beautiful people that are, are joining our, our league here. And this league is not Jess's team, right? It's interesting because as we go through our little resurrection within ourselves, you're going to find these dying aspects of you. You're going to integrate them and they're going to know things that you didn't know. You see, 70% of your intuition is in your gut. And when you sit like this, your gravity is pushing down your ability to even produce your own serotonin. So you're going to be looking for it outside of you. You're going to be looking for dopamine outside of you. You need a hit off of a person, a place, or thing that's going to keep you focused outside of you. But if you really start to turn inwardly and take this, this class quantum fitness here, then you're going to start to see that all these answers have always been right in here. Yes, the memories are there, but we were going to clear those out so that you have your original factory settings. And that is who you were before the world told you no. What would you have accomplished if people told you, you know, didn't tell you to stop being loud? What would you have done with your life if you were allowed to be all of you? Well, guess what? You have that opportunity now. And the energy of the planet is speeding up into a higher rhythm and a higher power to enlighten us. But it's also going to get rid of the old, just like the winter. The leaves are going to drop. The old paradigm is going to go away. And if you're noticing right now that you're getting petty, if you're feeling bitter, if you're like really caught in some sort of like righteous act, I want you to take stock and say, is this just all I can create that my brain is addicted to this, this energy of drama because I can't create something bigger because any bitterness on the other side is just be better, right? Jealousy means that I should be doing that too. Okay. So go do that, right? Comparison means my eyes are not on what power and potential I have. I'm focusing on what you have, which means I should probably put down my social media and I should go live my dreams. If I am constantly telling my partner to respect me and see me and hear me, then maybe I need to look in the mirror and see what partner I am neglecting. If I am struggling to make ends meet in 2022, have I really realized that maybe I am playing below my pay grade and I need to go where I am appreciated, which means that I will appreciate in value if I can let go of where I am devalued and understand that that devalued version of me is resurrecting. So the anger and the injustice that you're feeling towards the stories that are happening around you are, are designed to piss you off so that you will let them go. Because in 5D, there is only, only connection. You are attached only to your sovereignhood. You're attached only to your hopes and dreams. And everyone that shows up with and for you will have their hopes and dreams that are somehow connected to yours. And it works like the perfect puzzle piece that you could never fit in your whole life. You become the puzzle out of these pieces of you. And then you look down and you go, wow, it makes sense. At 46 years old, I'm creating what I've always wanted to create, which was a global quantum healing space platform and centers where the ancient medicinal earth medicine of our planet that is so abundant 
is accessible in a microdosing form. So we're not getting too high and going too low to check out. Our apothecaries are designed to teach you how and remind you how to check in through a microdosing pattern. Then that's going to bring you to the follow the white rabbit idea and bring you into the upstairs where our quantum fitness is. It's very focused on present future creations. It's about letting go of your past stories and your biological imprints and your cellular memory and your muscle memory and bringing forth the inner child's art, creative music, dance, flow, then into the super conscious room where you will be remembering through scalar energy, the Tesla based energy, our, our Healy uh, practition training and our clairvoyance, clair audio, clair sentient play time. So you can see that we are doing what I have always wanted to do, and it is quantum circuit training for everyone, which means no metaphysics degree needed, no Reiki certification required. Come from your darkest, darkest place and remember that you're only here to play. You are the actor, the director, the creator, the producer, and at any time, if you're seeing this round and round and round, maybe it's time for you to stop and see what clues you need to pick up to reformulate and remind yourself so that you can remember yourself. And then you'll notice you know so much more than you did last week as soon as that part of you heals. You'll remember certain aspects of yourself. And if you say, well, I don't really have time to play. I'm working too hard. Well, your spirit, that slow down to have a physical experience. Do you really think you came here to play bills and die? Do you really think you came here for a nine to five reality where you get really excited about that one vacation that's on credit that you get pissed off that you have to take all your pay off and you only get one of them and your family isn't going to love you anymore if you do more for them. Matter of fact, you're probably doing way too much and they're complaining about it because they are your past and your trauma being stimulated through your ability to stay where you are and honor your obligations and your commitments before you had your butterfly wings. You are going to help people more at living as an example. You're going to be able to help people more financially than you are right now is if you go and pursue all of you. You're going to be able to hold space for people who are sicker if you can hold space for yourself. So this idea is for us to Really sit back and go, we're in March 2022. Who am I? What am I? What have I become? What have I lost? What have I found? And who do I choose to be moving forward? I don't need to know my purpose because the bits and pieces of me that have been lost, they're going to tell me as soon as they show up. My job right now is to focus on the me, myself, and I, and how I feel about me. The universe is giving you your biofeedback. In time relationships, help and money based on how you really feel about you, not how you feel about you or you or you. Guilt and shame is what your blinders are. It's used, guilt and shame is used to keep you from integrating. Ego uses the outside distractions to keep you from looking inside. There's always going to be something exciting happening out there, guaranteed. Your job is to go, do I like? what I'm seeing? Do I like what I'm experiencing? Or would I like to choose a new adventure? Because 5D is in a place that, okay, I've done enough meditating. I'm ready. It's been how much have you mastered hell? Because you're going to build heaven out of it. Every part of your purpose is built from your pain. Every part of your spiritual gifts comes from your own suffering. And every ounce of your compassion comes from walking in other people's shoes. So every ounce of what you're going to create that's bigger than life moving forward in this new world is going to be based on not your successes, but it's going to be based on your failures and how you fell and what you learned when you fell and who you picked up when you fell and who you've become because of your fall. And in that, you will be able to create your legacy. You'll be able to create your your name will go on and on and on. Because until I really finished integrating this, all I had was 20,000 hours of metaphysical training. And if the internet ever went down, 
or, you know, any of that ever got disappeared, any of my work ever disappeared, I would disappear with it because it was all etheric. And this year I decided because I have recovered so many bits and pieces of me that, that I want something to be real. I want something I can leave for my kids. I want something that they can do. I want something that they can love because this information that I'm teaching is coming from such a high place that only a very few people can understand it anyways. And I have always wanted to ground this information in everyday practical use that a kindergartner could do. And so that is what I'm working on. And the only reason I've been able to manifest anything that I'm doing right now is because I have been focusing on my lost pieces, not chasing money and success. Matter of fact, you go through phases where you almost lose it all. And that is sometimes your rebirth. But the universe rewards you three times when you invest in yourself, not investing in an idea that you think is going to get you rich quick, but investing in your heart's desire that allows you to produce what it is your heart's desire. And what I mean by that is throwing it into a big investment and going like this, Bitcoin, make me money. Not saying that that's not fun, but investing in some really good podcasting equipment so your voice is clear. Investing in a, an editor to edit that book you wrote 100 years ago. Investing in a website where, where people can find you. Invest, it may sound like a, oh, well, that's not a huge investment. But see, the universe doesn't see your actions where you're putting your time. It sees why. If you're giving it away and hoping, you then you're basically giving your power away. If you're hoping your partner is going to see you, you're giving your power away. If you're hoping that, that you know, your book will get out there, even though it's not even printed. You see, hope is a drug that has taken us into the reflection of the outside, praying that someone will come and see us. But see, the thing is, is me investing in my own business, my own ability to create my own heart's desire is how everyone will see me. Because if I hope and I sit and I wait, I will be judged, attacked, shamed, guilted, and ridiculed for what I'm doing wrong. Or I could spend so much time perfecting my own craft, playing in my own pain, recycling and moving into my own inter interactions with my own integration space. I'm not going to care. Because I will tell you, the more and more and more and more and more and more I do this, the less people seem to have a problem with crazy jests. Right. And I don't care either way because I am literally living in my own created Disneyland right now. And these quantum healing centers that I'm creating are, are very much about ex ex celebrating the past of what this planet has been able to offer us, what's been right under our nose the whole time in our plants, our flower, our air, our water. It's been right there the whole time. The frequency that can change into an, our own enlightenment is right here. And we also have access to some very high level quantum technology that is also right here. And you'll be able to find all of that in any of my locations. We're going to start with our mothership here in Kansas. And we are going to break ground, like open up our doors in July. We are going to have a great big grand opening where you're all invited. If you want to come and creep and see what we're doing, we're going to have a gala, of course, because I always have to have a reason to have a party and dress up. And we are going to have a black tie event that's going to be called the Alchemist Ball to introduce the world to the new future of quantum medicine, which is the past, present, and the future all under one roof. Because you are the past, the present, and the future in that body. And you deserve to have every ounce of what you need around you instead of going to this expert and that expert and that expert that seems to contradict themselves one-stop shop from the ancient ancient past medicine to the future of technology that is what your dna is going to be activating towards your brain is going to be opening up as in the simulation you're going to learn about your virtual reality suit. You're going to learn about everything that is inside of you that has been holding you back is nothing more than pain and trauma and separation. And the more that you act in your physical world instead of literally respond and take stock and change the formula here, the longer this is going to take. So I'm a biohacker and I'm creating biohacking boot camps all over the world. We have one opening in Canada. We have one opening in Florida. Soon Costa Rica, 
and possibly California. And this has literally been my dream my entire life, but I didn't think I would be able to facilitate it, especially when my business partner is in Ireland, right? And yet here we are because there is aspects of me that are working well with me. I seem to be working well with others. Money seems to be there. The time is there, even though I have two other businesses and four kids. And my joy is through the roof, not because of what I'm creating in physical reality, but how I'm creating it with me. I urge you to take this opportunity to not blow off Easter this year and really sit back and say, what part of me is resurrecting? Where am I not allowing my wings or worried that maybe I don't have them? You know, I like to tell people I have the wings, but I don't actually know if they're there. This is a humbling experience this year, guys. This is the root awakening. So even the most spiritual people out there, any of your unconsciousness is going to get triggered up to the subconscious so that you can be a vibrational match to it. So you're not failing, you're falling, you're falling into place, you're falling in love with yourself. And I really urge you guys to take this opportunity to see how much you actually do love yourself when you're not blinded by what you're not, right? You never really lost any money or time. All you've lost is experiences that you thought were going to get you to where you're going. Once you have your wings, realize this, guys, you don't have to lose anyone. Butterflies can go visit caterpillars. Caterpillars can't fly. Don't Be a caterpillar because you love someone. Go be a butterfly and then go hang out with them. All right. So this is my second Sunday. Um, We will be posting information about our new quantum fitness centers and our apothecaries um, as we're developing it. Right now, we are doing our build out in Kansas City. We are breaking down walls and we are making it. uh, We're in this beautiful 1880s building that is off authentic to Kansas City's architectural industry, which was the baseline for the railroad that went in. The building that I'm actually have acquired, it is the pioneer building where the buggies and the railroad equipment was made so that we could create transportation and freedom throughout the country. So I thought that was really interesting symbolism. The building that I'm in too is called Nichols and Sons. And I acquired a horse and buggy through an auction a few years ago that was an original Nichols and Sons buggy from 1820. And my my maiden last name is Nichols. So I thought it was an interesting return to the scenes, right? Return to the scenes of the trauma and then the pain and the crime. But at the same time, it's a great place for me to build my dreams. I never thought it would be Kansas City, but I'm here. My son is here. My kids are here. And this is where we will bring our mothership. And this will be the example for all the other ones that open globally. Very simple, very, very simple science at a quantum level and a chemical level because you are chemical and you are quantum. And it is all about educating and providing you with the micro dosing ability to check in safely. All right. So look forward to that. You guys follow me on Facebook, Instagram. That's where I'm posting most of the pictures. Jessica Alstrom also will be adding information to the website once we get it. And you guys can see before and after pictures of our rebuild and our remodel and our concept. And hopefully this inspires you to do you right. This isn't about what I'm doing. It's about what you can create through the inspiration Be inspired through spirit, through action, through remembering, through your own pain, through your own trauma. What is that pain giving you, right? Don't, it's not about revenge. It's about sweet poetic justice that, you know what? This pain is going to actually make my million dollars if I would stop avoiding it. This pain over here is probably my great idea that I can't have because I have no motivation because of my depression. I've been disappointed too many times. Go to each one of the disappointments and interview them. I bet you that they have a nugget of gold for you that will help you let go of gravity, lighten up, get rid of the weight so that you can stop waiting. It's your time. Use this opportunity to really move out of your cocoon and fly. All right. I'll see you guys next month.